next steps. Our next step is to um, start to study a sort of simulated environment where now we're not just looking at the direct generation of an overall pattern, but we're trying to isolate using a sort of secondary overlay system that, that isolates it and modifies it in a couple different ways. Okay, so um, one of the ways I'm going to show you an abstract and then I'm going to kind of show you an applied version um, of this. So keep the same definition going. Um, if you want to, you can uh, group it and name it something appropriate for what we've done here. Um, but I'm going to start sort of a new segment here and I'm going to start with a box. But the box I'm going to create on the side um, using the box command in Rhino. So click on a box and I want you to make it sort of, um, well actually, yeah, let's just make it approximately the size, maybe slightly larger than the pattern. And um, doesn't really matter exactly how high you make it, but something like this. And then go to params and geometry and reference in box. So it starts off empty. You just need to set one box and, oh, you can trace it. Sorry, I forgot. I thought you had to actually reference the box, but it makes you trace it. Uh, I tried to do it with project on, and project will not allow you to do the z-axis, so make sure you turn that off. Set a box. I'm going to go there to there to there, and there it is. So you actually don't need to draw the box in Rhino beforehand, I don't believe. <clears throat> and I'll delete it. So there it is. Uh, anyway, so this box, right? The box is very important because what I'm going to show you is how to do a um, manual sort of secondary delimiter, okay? Um, so I want you to think of this as if it's one of the definitions that I show you in class. And I want you to think about how you can use the ideas from this to do something similar on something else that we've created, namely what we've created right here. Okay, so just be thinking about that as I do this. So I'm going to automatically populate this box with a bunch of points. Okay, so if I go up to vector and grid, there's this uh, cool little uh, tool called Populate 3D, and it's a randomizer. It just throws a bunch of points in a box that you can then work with and modify and all this other cool stuff. So Populate 3D is going to request a region box and a number of points, and then uh, this is a seed, I think. Yeah, so seed is just that randomizer that I told you about. It just kind of shuffles it around. And the P pre-existing population. I don't know what pre-existing population is really used for in this node. But anyway, the simple form is if I plug my box in, I get a bunch of points. Super simple. Well, you can't really see it on screen, but there you go. The projector is hard to see it. So anyway, you get a bunch of po uh, points in the box, and um, we're going to use those points to select and remove, really. That's, that's basically it. So in order, <clears throat> in order to do that, what I'm going to use is a cull pattern. And the cull pattern is going to require, obviously, a pattern, which is going to require us to create a mask. Right? So let's start with the end in mind, and let's bring in our cull pattern, which you guys have used now. <clears throat> um, it is under set and sequence. And it is call pattern right here. So like I said, call pattern needs a list to call and it needs a pattern to call by. In this case, it's a Boolean mask, right? Trues, falses, or zeros and ones. That's important to know, zeros and ones. So <clears throat> um, the list is going to be populate 3D. So notice how the predefined point value, it says false, false, true, true. What that is doing is it's taking the list that Populate3D has generated 
and it's removing, or rather, um, false, false, it's keeping. So the first two it keeps, and then the second two it gets rid of. So when I plug this one in, you'll see, uh, oh, actually I had that backwards. So the, the false, false means it's going to remove that from the list, and the true, true means it's going to keep it. So that's why you see the 62.13 index item 2 is what remains and starts at the top of the list. Does that make sense? I see some lost faces, but anyway, that, that's all we did. We just plugged it in with the default values. We didn't change anything. So um, <clears throat> now we get the opportunity to control which ones it's going to get rid of. And I'm going to do that by essentially measuring a point, uh, an axial position value of each of the points, which is interesting because now I can basically take a slider that measures the length of the box and then I can, um, or that is approximately the length of the box I should say, it doesn't measure. Um, and then I can essentially uh, just start to split using whether or not the points say X value or Z value is larger than what I've defined. Right, so again, we haven't really introduced anything new because we've used this before, we just used it in a very different way. So it looks like this, <clears throat> and then you'll get it. But uh, larger than, under math and operators, right here, larger than, is uh, it creates a Boolean output. Remember, we used it as a filter mask before. Um, and it's going to test whether or not it's, it's larger than that value. So if I measure approximately the length of this box, it says 63.347 feet. Um, I just need to make a number that's about that large or larger. Um, and it's going to allow me to, to um, remove certain points. So uh, if I create a slider here that goes from zero Actually, it's because it's a little bit uh, south of the X, I'm actually going to start from negative 10 to uh, 75. Sure. And I plug that into B. So um, what, what I'm going to do is take anything that is larger than this numerical value is going to be uh, is going to be listed as I believe true when it's up here. So true if a is greater than b. So that means it's going to keep it. So I'll plug that into p, and until I get my measure my uh, axial value of whatever it is, um, I won't really get any results. So to do that, you go to oh sorry I missed this one math operators. You go to um, vector and point, and rather than constructing a point, which we've done before, we're now deconstructing a point, which is going to read all of the axial position values along the x, y, and z axis for these points. All of them. Which I can then test. So if I'm measuring in the y direction, Right? All I need to do is plug in all of their y values, like this, and turn off the original input here. And you see that as, my, as I slide my slider back and forth, I'm delimiting which points remain. So my question to you is, think about your design process. Think about what we have next to it. How can we use this? Anybody? Ideas? It doesn't have to be necessarily creative. Just how, in some way, can you integrate this into what we have next to us. 
doesn't even have to include all parts of it. I'm going to throw out two, maybe three examples, and then I, I'm going to pause for a moment, and hopefully you guys can come up with an idea um, of something we can do a little differently. So right off the top of my head, I obviously can do exactly the same thing to the pattern I have already created, where I can now delete certain parts de depending on their position. Um, if I wanted to create two of these uh, delimiters, I could keep maybe just the end third and the beginning third and cut out and delete just a middle part. It's an option too. Um, I can use the the delimiting factor to change my geometry from circles to say triangles at a certain point along the pattern. So these are all options that we can do just based on their position in space. So that's when, anyway, you know, barring what your ideas are for what you can do with it, the point I'm trying to make is this. When we're doing these abstract exercises, you should be thinking about when and where it might apply in your design process, right? So, and don't necessarily think about design, but think about other architectural elements you might be able to use it for. In this case, it's a positive geometry, so you might use it for like a fritted glass. Um, but this abstract that I just showed you, being able to kind of go back and forth along a point in space, or even along the position on a surface, is incredibly valuable because you can then use it to determine where on your facade you have certain things. And that's a very general idea for a very abstract exercise. Okay. Um, so if you guys have no questions, um, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to move on to, uh, well, yeah, I'll show you applying it to this real fast. Actually, how long are we going? Maybe I'd do it on this video. Well, all right. So I'll just do it real quick on this one um, just to keep it, keep it steady here. So what I would do in this case is if I'm culling a pattern, I'm not necessarily going to use the populate 3D. I just copy and paste this, and instead of the um, points list getting plugged in, it really just becomes the scaled geometry, which if I turn off the originals and I keep the grid, I could turn the grid off too, but essentially all I'm doing now is just applying this to my pattern here. And that's if I apply it at the end if I apply it at the beginning, then my pattern will also adjust. Maybe I only want this to be on half of my surface. And um, I'll take a step back here and I'll plug it into that. I'll plug it into the points themselves. So if I plug these points in and I plug that in, it removes that whole point list, which I can then plug into all of my outputs. So after locking the solver and replacing the connections, let's see, here and here. Oop, I have an error. Ah, yes. I need to also call the pattern. I need to do a separate one for... This is going to look really confusing and messy, but I need to do it for the cells as well. There. Oh, that's points. Darn. Hold on. Go to surface. You guys won't need to do stuff like this, but I'm just, I just want to show you that it can be done. So grab the center point, plug that in, boom, and then that goes up there. There you go. And I still have an error. But you get the idea, right? So if I turn all this off, And if I modify this, see that? You guys should all be checking this one out. It's very, very important. I know you guys got distracted because I got into a hairy situation, but now it's exactly correlative to where it is along the pattern. So, oh, not that one, sorry, this one. See that there? 
So I can change now where the patterns delimiting uh, factors are. Okay. Sorry, that was long winded that last part, but anyway, uh, let me go back. There. Uh, any questions before I move on? All right. You guys are so quiet today. 